Let's look at John chapter 10, verse 10 tonight. As we continue a series entitled, Building a Better Life. Somebody shout, Building a Better Life. The Bible says, Jesus speaking these words, The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. One translation says that you may have a life better, greater than you could ever imagine or dream of. God's plan and God's desire for you and I is not that we barely get by and barely make it. He wants us to have joy and peace and a blessed life. And so tonight, I believe God is looking to us because He's given us the tools and the ability to build great lives. And so tonight, if your life is not where it needs to be, you need to start building. And God will show you great and mighty things. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint us tonight to hear the word of the Lord, to speak the word with clarity, the power of the Holy Spirit moving, the glory falling. That God, we realize in the house of God, there is the presence of God. Help us not to miss you and let your anointing flow. Destroy every yoke. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shouts. I want to say you got what it takes to make your life great. Say that with me. I got what it takes to make my life great. You got what you need to succeed. You got what it takes. When God created you and me, he put everything in us that we needed to fulfill our destiny and help us build a great life. You may not know it because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He is constantly trying to tell you you're a nobody, you're not worth it, you're a failure, and he wants you to live far beneath the privileges that God has provided for you. He wants you to live with limitations and defeat. But I say this tonight, we We do not have to live that way. Jesus came, somebody shout Jesus, that we may have abundant life. You see, the devil's a liar. Look at your neighbor and say, I got what it takes, and so do you. See, God is a strategic God, a God of planning and design. He has a great design for your life. He is concerned with how your life is and the way you live. He didn't just create you and me and say, let's see what he can do. Let's see what happens. He didn't throw us out in the world and say, you're on your own. No, God is precise. He's intentional down to the smallest detail. And he laid out your life and he laid out my life with a perfect plan for us. He put in you and me everything thing we needed to fulfill that abundant life that he came to give us. You are completely equipped with the things you need to fulfill your dream. You got it. Somebody shout, I got it because God gave it to me. So use what you got to build your life better. Don't settle for where you're at. There's a lot of church folk that think this is as good as it gets. I want to tell you there's better out there. Somebody shout, amen. I want God to do greater things in my life. Amen. You know, we were talking about my surgery and and how that uh, uh, the, the new hip. I said, I got a new hip and I got a new lease on life. I said, I believe the best is yet before me. I believe great things are about to happen. You ain't seen nothing what God can do for you. We need vision and destiny and dream to build a better life, to build a greater church. You are completely equipped with the things you need to fulfill your dream. No wonder Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. Paul knew what God had put in him. He knew that God had put the answer for every situation in his life. See, building a great life doesn't mean you won't have problems. It just means you'll overcome the problems. God has already put in you and me uh, everything we need before it ever happened. He's already put a doorway escape before we have to face that door. He's already provided healing before I'm sick. He's already given me victory before I even have to go into battle. Whatever I have to go through in life, I have the grace of God in me to go through it and come out victorious over death, hell, and the grave. That's a great life. A great life is not having not having problems. A great life is overcoming your problems. Whatever happens, I have the ability to survive it. Somebody shall survive it. God put it there. You know, no one really knows what they'll have to face in life, but you can know whatever it is you are equipped 
equipped by God to defeat it, overcome it, be triumphant, and win in Jesus' name. You are fully loaded and completed and equipped for life that is set before you. So get this. Whatever happens, you got whatever you need to handle it. I don't care how big and bad the devil thinks he is. You got power over all the power of the devil. Somebody help me right here. I don't care how bad things look in life. God will give us a great life right in the midst of it. Now, I don't know what the White House is doing, what the politicians are doing, but I know children of God, God is getting ready to pour out his spirit and do great things. See, I don't have to wait for the right president. I don't have to wait for the right uh, 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 Democrat or Republican. I know God has already designed my life to be great. I was talking to a man not too long ago, and he was talking about how bad it is in the world and how bad corrupt politicians are, and on and on and on. And I said, hey, my life's pretty good. If you'll stop sometimes and look around you, you'll say, God's been good to me. When you see that man holding that sign at the street corner, I say, praise God, God's been good to me. Hallelujah. You see, we are full of, so get this, whatever happens, you've got what you need to handle. Life is filled with tribulation, I know that. Trouble, affliction, pain. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. Be happy about it, because I've overcome it. I've already conquered it, and I give you the power and the ability to overcome it. I set you up for victory and to have a better life. So whatever you're uh, waiting for, uh, 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 what's around you, the next bend in the road, you're ready for it. No matter what the devil throws in your way, I don't know what I've got to face. I don't know what the devil's going to try to do, but I know one thing. God's grace is sufficient. Hey, hey, sometimes, do you ever just come in here and praise God on credit? You had a bad day, things have been going bad, you, you, you heard bad news from the doctor, and you say, you know something, I know God's got it, so I'm going to go ahead and praise him. He brought me through that, he'll bring me through this. Somebody give God a praise on credit. So get this, whatever happens, you got inside of you whatever you need to handle it. Ain't God good? He put it there before you ever needed it. This life is full of trouble, but so, so whatever we're facing, be confident. We are more than conquerors. Somebody say, be confident. Be confident and be bold. Don't let it intimidate you or make you fearful. Have confidence in God. Have trust in God. Listen to your resume. This is the resume. You're qualified for the job of life. You got what it takes to walk through every valley, to weather every storm. To go through every furnace hell desires and come out victorious. You got the power to part every Red Sea and walk on dry land. Defeat every giant. Overcome every obstacle. Move every mountain and win every battle. Can God get an amen out there? Put every demon under your feet. Drive out every sickness, every disease. Quench every fire of the wicked. Put every enemy under the run and overcome every temptation. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. We have the ability to face every challenge. Endure every trial, every hardship. Pass every test and finish the race with victory and joy. Isaiah 43, 1 says, the Lord says, I've redeemed you. Let me basically give you what that says. I have set you up. I've called you by name, equipped you. You are mine. So when you go through the water, it will not overcome you. When you go through the rivers, it will not drown you. When you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. You will still have a great life with all kinds of hell going on around you. The scripture says, we're in the world, but not of the world. The world cannot limit us or stop us or defeat us. Is anybody getting that? I said the world cannot limit us or stop us or defeat us because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal through God. They are mighty through God. And we are fully equipped for whatever the devil puts or throws in our life. Remember, no weapon hell forms against you shall prosper. See, that's a good life. That's a great life. Nothing can, 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 hell can do can defeat you. So we need to boldly step up and proclaim the abundant life. Now here's what you've got to say to yourself. I'm going to be happy. I have decided whatever hell I've got to go through, God is still good to me. God is blessing me. I don't know why I'm facing what I'm facing, but God's been good to me. Can anybody look back over your life and say, God has been so good to me. I praise him. I praise him. I praise him. When you can learn to do that when you're facing uh, opposition, 
realize God has anointed you and provided you to become everything he's called you to be, to activate that anointing, to be fearless and bold and confident. Have the attitude, Satan, you're not going to defeat me. When, when problems come, say, say, devil, I know that's a problem, but you're not going to defeat me. I, I know that's a storm, but you're not going to overcome me. I, I know hell is hitting me, but God has got me in the palm of his hand. I'm coming out of this. Can I ask anybody, anybody ever come out of anything? Give God praise. I said, you're going to pull down strongholds and storm down the gates of hell and walk in liberty and freedom and victory and taking back everything the devil ever stole from you. Can I tell you this? Are you ready? This is good. Your best is not behind you. Your best is before you. Things are about to get good around here. Give God praise. Don't get your eyes distracted by stuff that's going on. Look far beyond that. And see the hand of God working right in the midst of what hell is trying to do. Because your life is a setup. Through Jesus Christ, you and I have been set up for success, for victory, for healing. We are winners and overcomers. Life is a setup. Somebody shout, we win. Nothing can defeat us. Nothing can overcome us. Nothing can keep us down. I read the last page of the book and it tells me God's people win. Now, don't get distracted. Hear me now. Don't get your eyes on other people and just uh, be the best you can be. Because one time, the writer uh, of Psalms, I believe 61, uh, got his eyes, or 72, got his eyes on his neighbor. And he saw all the wickedness they were doing, but they were being blessed, it looked like. And he took his eyes off himself. But you got to keep your eyes on yourself. Remember, you may not have everything somebody else has. You may not be as good a preacher or as good a singer or a musician, whatever, uh, as someone else is. You may not have as much talent or ability as someone, but you got what God give you. And what God give you is awesome. I said, what God give me is awesome. Thank God he's blessed you, but what God has given me is awesome. And this, this mighty power is to help me build a better life. And so praise God for what others have. Rejoice with them. Be happy for them. Celebrate them. Uh, their talents do, should not intimidate you. What they have should not limit your life. Again, know this. You got what you need to succeed. There is favor and blessings and grace a, a, that is unique to your life. So just be happy for you. Be, God has specifically blessed you. Nobody is a better you than you. Now, I'll tell you, I'm the best me there is. I'm not bragging, just, no bragging, just fact. I'm the best me there is. And you're the best you you are. And God says you are unique. You are special. You are called out. And I've got anointing upon your life that you would have a great life. Nobody is better uh, uh, being me than I am. So, so run your own race. Fulfill your own purpose and succeed. And if you keep your eyes on the Lord, you'll be able to build your life. You can't build your life when you got your nose in everybody else's life. When you're always trying to wonder why they got this and you don't have that. You're forgetting that God loves you as much as anybody else. And what they got's for them. But what I got's for me. Hallelujah. When you start competing and comparing, that happens in the church. That happens with pastors. Uh, you get distracted and lose your focus because you take your eyes off God and off of you. You can't be the best you if you're trying to be the best somebody else. Uh-oh. Now, it's all right to admire people. It's all right to try to do better for your life. But you can't be somebody else. God wants you to be you. You need to stay focused on your own goals and stop looking at everybody else. Build your own life. That's what's wrong with a lot of people in church. They're so busy, got their eyes on anybody else, they're not building their own life. What can I do to make my life better? I'm not worried about what you're doing or what you've done or what God's done for you. Thank God. Be blessed. But i got to get my eyes on the Lord for me because God's got special things for me. you got to know who you are, and you got to know who you aren't. Listen to this. John the Baptist was baptizing people and getting a lot of attention. At one point, the Jewish leaders asked, are you the Christ? John said, I know who I am. I know my mission. I know my purpose. I'm a voice crying in the wilderness. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He said, I baptize you in water. 
That's my call. My call is not to baptize you in the Holy Ghost, but there's one coming whose shoes I'm unable to tie, untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's his calling, but here's my calling. I'm not the Messiah, but I am special. You're not getting this. You're not getting it. I'm not the Son of God, but I still got a call. I'm not the Son of God, but I'm still special. I am a man called by God with divine purpose and destiny and assignment upon my life. That's who I am. I'm not the man of God. I'm not the Son of God, but I am special. Look at your neighbor and say, I, I may not be as great as somebody else, but I'm special. Hallelujah. He was teaching us that if we are to fill our destiny call, we must know who we are. But you got to know who you are. Now, I know a few chords on the piano, but I'm not Matt. I'm not David. But I'm telling you what, when I get over there, I'm going to play and be happy. Amen. I can play the bass a little bit, David. They let me play one song. Isn't that great? They let me play one song with the bass. But I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. But David can make it talk. I can't. Carmen can play all these instruments. and Matt can play all this. I, 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 sometimes you're not careful. You envy this. But I am who I am through Christ. They may not can get in the pulpit and preach like me. All of us have special gifts and talents. And I got to focus on what God has called me to be. Talked to my surgeon the other day, and Brother Wilbur has got to have a shoulder operation, and he asked me to ask my doctor about maybe seeing him, and my doctor said, Jeff, he said, I am a specialist in knees and hips. He said, now, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to brag, I'm good at knees and hips. He said, I've done thousands, and I'm good at it, and that's what I feel like God's called me to do, God's hand on my hand. He said, so I don't do shoulders. So we have another doctor that does that. And I thought to myself, isn't it good to stay in your lane? When you say, I'm going to be the best me right where I'm at. Somebody shout amen. Amen. So don't compete and don't compare. Be what God created you to be and be happy with it. You know, if you look inside enough, you can be happy. And if you're not happy, build and build and build. Do better. Amen. You don't have to have great gifts for God to use you in a great way. Now, now notice this. I thought this was pretty cool. You know what took David from the shepherd field to the throne? It wasn't his leadership skills. It wasn't his ability to write music and psalms. It wasn't his personality or his size. Notice this. The thing that promoted David was the gift to throw a rock. No big deal. But he knew how to throw a rock. And he was good at it. He was a good rock thrower. Now, what are you saying, Pastor? It seemed like such a little bitty gift, but he took that gift and he used it to maximize. He became one of the best he could be. So you, whatever your little gift you think, it's little. And it's, but let me tell you how little this gift is. Saul and all of his army and all of his men, they had talent, they had training, they had skills, they had ability, but David killed the giant. Sometimes it's not the big accolades and the teachings and, and, and the degrees on the wall and how smart somebody. Sometimes it's just somebody sitting on a church pew that knows how to do a little something for God. You may not know how to sing, but you know how to praise. You may not know how to dance, but you can wave a flag. You may not know how to do something. You can help a child. You can usher in the church. It's a rock-throwing ministry. They didn't slay the giant, but David did. David slew the Goliath with a little gift called rock throwing. It looked like anybody can pick up a rock from a kid down on up can pick up a rock and throw it. You take these children out here in the parking lot out there, where's rock, first thing he's going to do is grab a rock and throw it. And if he couldn't throw it, you wouldn't say, put that rock down. You know he can throw it, so look out windshields and look out glasses and look out buses and vans because you know he can throw that rock. And, and it looks so insignificant. It looks so, so useless. But David said, I'm going to take what looks small. Now, that's it right there. That's where we are right now. Everybody thinks I can do nothing. It looks like I'm just unprofitable to the church. It looks like, but you know, if you can stand at that desk back there and be a greeter, Here's, all, here's the qualification. 
You don't have to say one word. Smile. An usher, he doesn't have to have great talent or ability. He stands at that door and welcomes you. You, you can park a cars and vehicles or drive by. You may think it's nothing to this. I want to do this. I want to be in the pulpit. I want to teach a class. I, maybe that's not your calling. But you may have a rock throwing calling. A small, insignificant, nobody appreciates calling. You know, I think about, and I say this a lot, I think about Mark King sitting back there. I don't know if I've ever heard Mark teach a Sunday school class, preach a sermon, sing a song. I don't know. Maybe you have, Mark. I don't know. But I know one thing that boy can do as good as anybody ever can. He can smile and hug you and say, I love you, and make you feel 10 feet tall. Now, Mark, a lot of people might think that ain't nothing. But I thank God the times I've come in here. And I may have been down and out. And I may have been uh, restless or whatever. going through, And that guy has met me and you cannot shake his hand. You ain't going to shake Mark's hand. He's going to hug your neck. And he's going to lift you up and say, you know what he always tells me? You don't look a day older than when I first met you at the old church. <laughs> oh, that, that's a great gift, Mark. <laughs> Hallelujah. That takes a great anointing. Hallelujah. But, but just being good to somebody. You know, you know, Harvey has talked to me several times, and he said, Pastor Jeff, he said, you know, my legs are getting weak. And he said, uh, you know, maybe you need to look at getting somebody else to do the hymn song or, or, or introduce you. And I said, Harvey, as long as you can crawl out there and show your face and smile, it's going to do something. A- am, I, am I preaching? Just last year, or maybe it was this year, Harvey, when they buried Sister Abbott, Milton and Henry's mother, they called and said, we want Harvey Harris to come and lead the congregation in singing. It's something special. Uh, Thank God for good praise team music, contemporary music, but he'll get up with an old red back hymn book song. And he brings us back. I don't know if y'all were at, at fellowship meeting, brings us back to when I was a kid. And how the old folks used to get up and sing with all their heart the good old songs of the cross. And hey, hey, I'm not knocking any of the music, but it's something, it's valuable. And the church needs that, Harvey. It needs you up here. It needs you. Make, I, I, I know, I, I know that, that the enemy would say, that's such a small thing. That's, and it, we, we got better singers. We got, they can sing this and that. But, but something about you, God has called you and chosen you to grab a hymn song. And sing that song with such intensity and such sincerity that before we ever get into the service, we feel motivated by the power of God. There is nothing ordinary about your gift. Did you hear me? I don't care what your gift. There's nothing ordinary about your gift. And your gift helps you build a better life. 